Okay, so today is today's topics are previous topics of syntheses of alcohols and then new ways to make alcohols including um, the Grignard I think it's mostly Grignard reactions. So does anybody have any questions on any of those? I would see some of those Grignard reactions. See some of them? Yeah. Examples? Yeah. Okay. All right, so... I think as I, I probably said in the video, when we're looking at sort of the fundamentals behind this is we've seen that reaction last week, right? We were able to take a terminal alkyne and react it with NH2 minus, which would then deprotonate that terminal alkyne to make the alkynyl anion, which is a C minus. Once we have that C minus, then it can go come over and react with a carbonyl. And that carbonyl could be, I'm just leaving it kind of blank, but as acetone, I suppose, literally. But we could have an aldehyde, we could have a ketone. We could even have two H's, which would be formaldehyde. So it doesn't matter really what the carbonyl is. It, the carbonyl cannot be a carboxylic acid, though. But it can be an aldehyde, an aldehyde ketone. And so what happens is, is that we end up with the O minus, and then we end up with the C triple bond C with the R group. So this opens up a whole bunch of reactions. If I can make a C minus, I can react the carbonyl with that C minus to basically make an alcohol. Now there's no acid present right now because the acid would have protonated this alkynyl anion and it would have killed it in terms of its ability to act as a nucleophile. So once we make the alkoxide, we then add H plus and H2O to that so that the alkynyl anion can become protonated so that we can now make our alcohol. So this is a synthesis of an alcohol. Okay. And I can do that with any C minus. The question is, this is a special C minus because this terminal alkyne can depro be protonated by CH or by NH2 minus. Now, the, the difficulty in trying to generalize this reaction is okay, I'd like to basically make any C minus that I could. And the problem is that if I think about okay, let's take a butyl group. So, what base do I add to that? butane that's going to deprotonate it. NH2 minus, well, let's say we tried to do that with NH2 minus. That means over here I would have a C minus plus NH3. Which of these two bases is stronger, the C minus or the N minus? The C minus, and so I need to basically use a base that's stronger than a C minus in order to do this deprotonation, so this will not happen. So I need a base stronger than a C minus to just deprotonate an alkane. And if you know what that base is, then you'll have to tell me because I don't know what that base is. What were you going to say? Never mind. Well, came in a four. Came in a four. Came in a four is an oxidizer, right? And and 
that now that, that you bring that up, we have to remember our classifications of molecules. So NH2 minus is a base. It only acts as a base. It's not a nucleophile and a base, it's just a base. KMNO4 oxidizing reagent. So we have to keep these in their particular groups. But there is no there is nothing that can deprotonate an alkane. Even another C minus isn't going to deprotonate an alkane. Because the, ba the, the barrier of deprotonating to get to the transition state would be too high and you don't get anything in return. So even, as, even making a C minus won't deprotonate a C minus. So I still would like to have a C minus because I'd like to react it with all these different carbonyls. And so what um, Grinier did, and Grinier, there was there was a there was Barbier before him, uh, ten or so years before him, and making carbanions was a goal. And so I mean Grinier gets all the he gets all the praise and all the publicity, but he kind of used a modified Barbier reaction. But what? Grignard found was that if you take magnesium metal and you react it with an alkyl halide, actually that will form an anion wherever the bromine was. And it doesn't just have to be to an alkyl group. You could have, for instance, like a vinyl bromide, and if you added magnesium metal to that, you would basically put the anion where the bromine is. So that's the goal. And so Grignard was able to accomplish that with magnesium. This is magnesium metal. So this is magnesium solid, this is magnesium metal. So, and the mechanism for this is what's actually called a single electron transfer mechanism. You can imagine that, well, let me, I'll simplify it without going down the road of the mechanism. Magnesium has two unpaired electrons, right? That's why it forms a magnesium two plus ion. Well, if you think about what happens, what if you cleave this bond in half, and the magnesium gives one electron to the carbon and then uses one electron, gives one electron to the bromine. The magnesium then becomes two plus. The bromine picking up an electron becomes minus one and the carbon picking up an electron becomes minus one. So what you have is a magnesium two plus sandwiched between a C minus and a Br minus. So this is what the single electron transfer mechanism is. It transfers one electron, then the other. Um, it, these kinds of reactions are, we haven't talked about free radical reactions, but we will. Um, they're, they're, it's kind of hard to know how quickly the electrons transfer. Because if they transfer one at a time and they really have to, why don't we just transfer both of them? So that's the complication. But that's what magnesium is able to do. So we end up with a C minus with the counter ion of an MGBR, MG2 plus Br minus, Br minus 1. So that's, that's what Grinier did. He came up with a way to make a C minus. And once you make the C minus then, you can react that C minus, whether it's a, a butyl group with a C minus, you can now go ahead and react it with a whole bunch of carbonyls and make alcohols out of it. So the same overall mechanism that we used for the alkynyl anion. Right? It's almost like somebody planned to put the alkynyl anion in the chapter before the Grignards to kind of foreshadow what was going to happen. Right. Textbooks are good. Textbooks are kind of like that. So, 
Now all I'm going to do is now I just need to make a C minus. The C minus, I'll probably try and be into the habit of writing the MGBR plus as the counter ion. It, there's always going to be a counter ion to it. And the alternative is that you can also take an alkyl bromide or an alkyl chloride and you can also react it with lithium but in this case you're, there's a stoichiometry to this that I'm not going to get into there's two lithiums for every one bromide and so you can basically make have a lithium cation as the counter ion to the C minus so Organolithium compounds and organomagnesium compounds react in this class the same. There are some there are some difficulties and sadly I did my PhD work in organolithium chemistry so I could go on for days. Um, but they aren't exactly the same, but for our purposes, we're gonna take the C minus and react it. So that's that's the reaction. That's what that's what Grignard would a, was able to accomplish. That's why every organic student has to learn that name, um, and also why it's in every textbook. And he won the Nobel Prize. The other important thing is that in this process, I'm making a carbon-carbon bond, and pretty much in the early 1900s, late 1800s. Anybody who had a reaction that made a carbon-carbon bond got it named after them and probably won the Nobel Prize. So making carbon-carbon bonds has always been a premium in organic chemistry. Nowadays we have transition metals that we can, and we'll see some of this later, we have transition metals, we have environmentally friendly ways of doing this reaction in water, um, and so Nowadays, I think you just get the name, not necessarily the Nobel Prize. So there's a bunch of these different names. We'll talk about them um, later. So that's, that's the setup. And then the question is, if I want to make alcohols, let's say I want to make a primary alcohol. Well, you think about making a primary alcohol, I'm always going to react this with an alkyl, with an alkyl group, with a with an alkyl Grignard. And so if I want to make a primary alcohol, I'm going to need to react that with a carbonyl that doesn't add any more alkyl groups. Because in the end I want a primary alcohol, so I want something with the RCH2OH. And so that means I need to react my Grignard with formaldehyde, which is the two, two H's, the one carbon aldehyde, so that's formaldehyde. You want to make a secondary alcohol with two R's, okay, same R minus group. Now what should I react that with? What kind of carbonyl? Aldehyde. Because I need one alkyl group and one H. Want to make a tertiary alcohol? We're going to take our Grignard and we're now going to react it with a ketone. So some books make this big elaborate chart, but there really isn't a need to make. And then we can modify this reaction a little bit, and we can say, what would happen if I added R minus to a Grignard to the to CO2? The R minus is going to come in, attack the carbon, and one of the two oxygens is going to break its bond. And now I made a deprotonated carboxylic acid.
So there's four Grinyards. Every one of them having nearly the same mechanism. And this part of the mechanism is all you're responsible for. The R minus plus the C double bond O. And then in the second step, the O minus reacting with H plus. Right. That's that could be the easiest mechanism I give you on an exam because it's only two steps. And you've already done it with this with the alkynyl anion last week. So that's Grenier's. Now those problems that I handed out to you, you'll see that the first one's review from last semester. And you have a choice of reagents to choose from. Then in the second one, we have all those different Grignards that I just sort of did. But then part three, it says, basically make those alcohols from a Grignard reaction. So how do we think about that? Because now we're thinking kind of in reverse. Well, remember that when we make a, an alcohol, we have three things attached to it. Not all necessarily alkyl groups, but they, we got three things attached to it. Two of those things came from the carbonyl, and one of those things was the Grignard. The COH group was previously the C double bond O group. So for instance, let's say we were going to do problem 20 in the handout that I gave you. We want to make that. How many different ways are there to make that? If all three groups around the COH were different, there'd be three different methods. Because each one of those groups could be the could be the um, Grignard, and then the other two groups would be make up the ketone or aldehyde or whatever you would make. In this case, since two of the groups are the same, there's only two ways to make it. So let's choose what group do you want to add? You want to add a methyl or an ethyl? Or sorry, methyl or a propyl group? What Grignard do you want to use? Your choice. What? Propyl. All right, so let's write a propyl Grignard. So we've got our MGBR plus, which is a counter ion, to a propyl anion. Okay. Now, if I'm adding the propyl group, What's left over then? Well, I need a ketone, or sorry, I need a carbonyl. And what needs to be attached to that carbonyl in order to make this molecule? Well, I'm adding the propyl group, right? So what's left over? Two methyls. So we put my two methyls here, and voila, that's what I would use to make that Grignard. And we have to begin to think kind of backwards in terms of, well, how would you make this? Or what ketone, what Grignard would I react to make this alcohol? 
And if I had the methyl grignard, then I'd have a methyl group and the propyl group attached to the carbon. So that's kind of the overall philosophy of, of Grignards. Now in some cases, if you have, for instance, the OH attached to a ring, well, two of the groups are going to have to be the ring. Unless you figure out how to take a long chain molecule and have the Grignard at one end and have it wrap around to form the ring. And that's not going to happen very easily. So some things there will only be one way to make it. Because if you've got a ring attached to the OH like in number 21, I think I'm making the carb I think I'm making the carbonyl out of the ring. I think I'm making cyclohexanone. Then figuring out what to add. So that's everything you want to know about Grenards. So if we were to do this in lab, which we're not going to do, but if we, um, but if we were to do this, we would take magnesium metal and we would add the alkyl bromide to it and let the stir it and let the reaction form and let the Grignard form. Then we would add the ketone, which would make the alkoxide, and then in the final step we'd add H plus, because you cannot allow a you cannot allow a Grignard or an organolithium compound to come in contact with moisture, with, with water. And so that's the difficulty of them. You gotta keep them dry, that means they can't touch air because of the CO2 and, and the moisture. So you have to do those reactions under, usually under an inert atmosphere, meaning something that doesn't have water, doesn't have CO2. Usually we have purified nitrogen that we that we react these things with, or or argon. Argon's a little better, but it's a little more costly. But you got to keep those things away from water. So, organolithiums, and yeah, depending on the organolithium, it it may or may not. Some organolithium compounds are what are called pyrophoric. Meaning when they hit moisture, they immediately flame. Yeah, there's there's one that there's one that will if you have it in a syringe, and the end of the solution touches the air, it just basically makes a flamethrower. Which may sound cool until you're trying to add that reagent to a round bottom of hexane, and flamethrower and hexane, not a good match. There's very few things that scare me, probably a lot of things that should, but that scared the crap out of me. When I went to put the syringe in, all of a sudden I see the flame shooting out the end. Like, I think we need a better method than that. So that's, and that, that's an lithium compound. It actually isn't butyl lithium. Butyl lithium is relatively calm. T-butyl lithium is very important. Back in my postdoc days, I made little crystals of the butyl lithium compound, and one fell from the diffractometer and landed on a napkin. And I smelled something burning and looked down, and the napkin was being charred up by the the reagent. It, it wasn't that wasn't super spectacularly bad. It's just that it all of a sudden there's smoke, and I'm like, why is there smoke? Oh, because your napkin's on fire. Because your little crystal butyl lithium fell off of the little thing. They can be worse. Sodium, potassium, and cesium are even worse. So we don't play with those. I don't play with those anymore, although I could. I just have to remember how to do it. Remember what not to do. So, so that's that's how we make Grignards and that's what we do with them. Any questions? So then, so they didn't ask any questions at all this morning. So we went, we went right into these. 
if you talk to somebody, maybe they told you to ask them questions so you don't go into the problems right away. So my suggestion is you can work on these. I'll walk around. I'll post the answer key after class. But this is a time to, to go through and do those. And if you have questions, raise your hand. I'll walk around. I can check them for you. And then I'll take some things, just a couple things that I would, that you have to be kind of aware of is whenever you have the carbonyl carbon, that's what you're going to add the Grignier to. So for one of these problems, for instance, you have a benzene ring with a negative charge. That negative charge has to add to that carbon so that you would end up with the benzene, with the OH here and then that benzene ring there. That may look strange to begin with, but that benzene ring has to add to the carbon. What people will sometimes do is they'll start adding carbons and moving the carbonyl outside the ring. No, it's got to stay inside the ring. The other thing is the trick question And there are no trick questions. But remember that Grignard's, the Grignards are not compatible with any kind of acid, including this, which is a carboxylic acid. So, so you're so used to adding the Grignard to the carbonyl, you got to take a step back. Okay, carboxylic acid, this is going to deprotonate that. So that you're going to end up forming the carboxylate and then the alkane. And then actually because it says to do a then H plus H2O step, you would end up actually regenerating the carboxylic acid plus the final product which would be the protonated granule. So that's I mean, you would call that a trick question. It's really not. But that's the one that's different from all the others. So you've got to keep your eyes open for carboxylic acid because they will not have the Grignards added to them. They'll just simply deprotonate. All right, so in the first, in the first batch of questions, we have to go back and remember our reagents from last semester. So I will post the, these are practice problems. I will post the answer key to this, or it's actually posted. I just have to um, push the button and it'll appear. But we need practice problems for alkynes. And so here's some alkyne practice problems for Friday. These aren't practice, these are homework problems. Okay, and so these are the reagents and the reactions of alkynes. So you can go ahead and take one of those. They're due on Friday. On Friday, I'll have back your your review problems, which you're going to give me the Scantron form for, and then um, I'll have your your problems from last week. If you didn't give me your problems from last week, please put those up here. So I'll take your review problem Scantron and take a homework set for Friday.